live on uh, Google Hangouts on air. So uh, today we've got a fairly brief agenda. Um, the first uh, hour or so will be our guest coach, uh, Mark Malatesta, and then uh, we'll uh, maybe take a quick break and then um, we'll do a training session uh, to, to catch up to where we were at the end of uh, last month or last the last session that we had. Um, so today um, <clears throat> our guest coach is uh, Mark Malatesta who is a former literary agent who worked on the inside of the publishing industry helping authors to get real book deals done with major publishers <clears throat> like Random House and Simon and & Schuster and Mark has successfully helped authors get six-figure advances and publish books that have become New York Times bestsellers. I've gotten to know Mark uh, through the info crowd and Mark and his wife Ingrid um, have teamed up uh, to um, really help entrepreneurs who want to become industry leaders uh, and to help them have greater impact both online and offline. What I really like about Mark, and we're going to get into this today, is his uh, unique business model because uh, typically uh, coaching or coaching related programs requires a lot of proactive selling. It's really a direct sales model. <clears throat> and uh, like many of you, I really hate to sell, as do most uh, professional service providers. Um, but what Mark's doing is un that's unique is he uses SEO. Um, and he's turned what is traditionally a uh, direct sales model into an indirect sales approach. And he'll explain more about it, but would you please welcome Mark Malatesta. Mark, right. I'm going to turn it over to you. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, uh, thank you, Roger, for A, for having me, B, for the introduction. You just gave me, gave me some really good sales material. Uh, I hadn't really thought about what we're doing quite that way, but um, it's true. Yeah, I mean, the, the SEO is half of it, getting people there, and then, as you know, having the right things on the website when they get there so that then they kind of go through that right little step-by-step -step process or funnel to the point where they're wanting to do coaching and they understand the value. So, so it's a great, great way of framing it. So, uh, Okay, so... Uh, basically, I have a few little things, like little housekeeping things. Like I'll, I'll do that real quick, just so everybody kind of doesn't go off on the wrong tangent. Um, SEO can actually kind of be dangerous, so uh, it's it's serious business. Just because it's kind of like writing books, it's really time consuming, and uh, you can invest a lot of money in domain names and things like that, and time, and and totally not know what you're doing, which is what I did for for my first nine or ten months with my business. And, you know, you can, it doesn't matter, this is the benefit of coaching or doing events like this, is you can be, you know, the smartest guy in the room in your niche, in your industry, but, uh, you know, everything is different, and, you know, if you, you know, you can't intuit your way to, to making everything work in SEO, so I'll kind of share quickly some, some of the things that I think will help everybody, whether you're advanced or a beginner. So basically, uh, just to give you a real quick snapshot so you know I know what I'm talking about, uh, I'll talk out of both sides of my mouth and tell you I'm, I'm not an SEO expert at all. Okay, and this, this is the good news, actually. It sounds like bad news, but that's really good news because you don't have to be. Um, there are a few things you have to know, and then I, I suggest that you get an SEO coach. That's not me, um, you know, so I'm not just selling me and what I'm doing, but I'll recommend somebody. I'll tell you about my SEO coach, and I, I recommend you check out her site. But before I met her and started working with her, what I did was probably like a lot of you guys, if you already have websites and blogs up, I kind of I, I came at everything backwards, which was I was thinking about my content and, you know, what do I have that's valuable that I can share, and let me just put pages and blog posts up about that. The problem with that is that 90% of what I was writing about was stuff that nobody was going to look for or not a lot of people my target market was going to look for. So I, again, my main niche is publishing and helping people get books published. And I would post articles about how to back up your writing. 
because that's incredibly important and I've lost stuff online. Problem is, if you do a little keyword research, nobody's looking for that. My target market, right? So it's kind of a waste of time. Uh, so it's basically every, every con all the content you create, you want people looking for that. So I kind of did that. I got lucky, just dumb luck. Some of the articles I wrote happened to be good keywords that I didn't know realize until later. And some people found me online. And I could track this through Google Analytics. That's not real hard. Talk about that a little bit more later. Um, but really, I was just kind of flying blind, wasting time. So anyway, after I worked with my SEO coach for a while, um, really intensively, I took about six months and created a ton of content, totally relaunched my website. And just to give you perspective on the numbers, um, I have a testimonial here I wrote for my SEO coach. So I'll give you cut some hard data, right? The average hey Mark, number, yeah? Um, I think we lost your picture. Can you turn your camera on and off? And do you know how to do that? Uh, let me see here. I think At the I can top, figure that if, if out. you mouse over the top of the screen, it should show an icon of the camera. Oh, you're it. back. Okay, there we go. Great. Tell me if that happens again. So, great. Okay. All right. So, just some hard numbers, so you can get an idea of what's in it for you with SEO. Because all people know is, oh, I'll get clients and customers. Well, that's true. But here's how it works. So. When I didn't know what I was doing, the average number of pages someone would look at on my website when they came to my site was 1.9, so less than two pages. After I did everything, it was up to 6.8 pages, right? <laughs> um, also, what was I ranking for on Google? I probably wasn't ranking for anything on page one of Google. Like if someone typed in a keyword, I probably wasn't ranking for anything. Right now, I just checked my numbers. Um, I'm ranking on page one of Google for 180 different keyword terms in my niche. Does that wow. make sense? And yeah. probably I'm number one, very not page one of Google, but number one for about 12 search terms that my target market searches for. So that's, that's just a little perspective. Um, and then obviously what happens with that, once you have that happening, it's a lot more traffic. And then if you have things set up on your website the right way, the content is right, the funnel is right, then some of those people end up opting in, some of those people become clients. Um, so that's, that's really big picture of kind of what happens. And let's see. That's pretty phenomenal. How long did it take you to be ranked for 180 keywords? And that's a lot of keywords. Well, oh, oh, I'm glad you asked. It's been a year. I launched my site a year ago, relaunched it. So it was up for about nine months, ten months, and then I spent about really three months writing the main content for my, my pages on my site. And then for my industry, and this is part of the lesson, I actually, let's just get into this. One of the secrets is you have to get out of your own head. You have to go do research and see what is my audience looking for? How do they think, right? So um, I, I might have put up a website before that was, you know, get published. Not really thinking critically enough that, well, a lot of the people who would type in a key phrase like get published are thinking about self-publishing, right? And if my main coaching is about help keeping helping people find traditional publishers, that's not good. I'll have a lot of people go onto my site, they get there and then they leave quickly. That kills my Google rankings because it's, it's your bounce rate. People go, wrong thing, they leave. You know, that's not good for you. So starting to do that research and uh, really uh, the main thing here, and you might think you already know this, some of you, um, maybe you know what your URL, your main URL for your website uh, domain should be and your main keywords, but maybe not. And I'll give you a really good example here. Uh, if you look for my market, my website is literary-agents.com, right? And I couldn't get literaryagents.com without the dash because it wasn't available. Little secret, Google doesn't really care, right? So literary agents with the dash is basically as good as without the dash. And sometimes you can get those domains for a lot cheaper. I wasn't ready to shell out 50 grand for literaryagents.com, which is what I'd have to do. Maybe in a year or two. I was just telling Ingrid about that the other night, but not right now. Um, so here's the key, though. Uh, if you do the research, 
you would there's no way you would know you can't intuit do more people look for literary agent singular or literary agent plural you wouldn't know right well yeah. literary agents plural twice as many people search that as they do singular you know so that was one of the things i might have shelled out 10 grand on literaryagent.com like an idiot not knowing that and yeah. get half the traffic that i could right so the whole the whole moral of this story is again you know if you're going to take the time you're serious about your business and you're committed take the time to work with somebody to do some of this research and figure it out um, because again it takes a lot of time to create that content uh, another thing how does seo work big picture it's really uh, it's really simple a lot of people worry that oh I don't want to do SEO Google changes every six months and I'll do great spend all this time and then my my rankings will go down the toilet well that only works if you do sneaky things and you try to cheat okay basically SEO works three basic things and you only have to do one of them to get a lot of clients to make a lot of money that's all I've done so far the first year is just focus on the structure of my site so it's organized the right way and the right content, which means the keywords and the content I'm putting on there that people are looking for. But that's only one third of how you get people. The other two thirds, one part is social media, and the other third is backlinks, people linking to your site. Um, well, you need to create good content for your site, so I mean, that's why I started there. I recommend everyone else do that. This year, I'm going to be focusing massively on social media uh, to kind of get get the traffic there and there's really you don't have to do one first and then the other you can do them at the same time for me I found it easier to do the you know all the content first but again that took me like six months to create all that and in the meantime you know I'm not getting tons of clients it's like an investment of time on the front end uh, let me see Another thing, um, this is a real important one. Uh, a lot of people ask about this. You might want to have two domain names. One of them is SEO Rich. Um, it's basically like literary-agents.com is my main domain because that that's a the best keyword that people my target market looks for, right? But it's kind of awkward to use in interviews. So if I do radio interviews and things like that, I, I don't give out that domain name. I'll give out my company name, which is literaryagentundercover.com. That forwards to my SEO domain, where everything is hosted. Uh, is that a question, Roger, or just background noise? I think that's background noise. Oh, okay, okay. I'm not sure who it is, but everyone should uh, turn off their mic just to keep the line clear. Thanks. Okay. Um, another thing, and this this can be overwhelming for you at first, but uh, Roger and I were talking before the call. One thing to think about, if you're really serious about being an information marketer and, and doing a lot of this stuff online, I, I love it. I'm fully committed because it's like real estate. Once, once you've done this work and you've set your things up the right way, it's going to work for you again and again and again. SEO is my number one source of clients and leads. I don't have to go out and speak every month. If I want to, great more clients but SEO is working constantly so what I'm doing now now that I have this first site optimized and I've done this over this year my strategy for this year in addition to starting to roll out the social media is going to be cranking out other websites and that can be overwhelming at first if you haven't even really developed the first one but just to give you an idea um, let's say you're an author you want to get a book publisher well, you might look for help on Google two different ways. Maybe you type in a keyword that contains the word literary agents. That's probably what you will do. But there's also um, about a third of the authors out there. To get a literary agent, you need a query letter. That's what it's called, your pitch letter. So I also have queryletter.com, which I'm going to optimize and get that going this year as well. Um, and you know, so we're going to do multiple websites over time. It sounds like a big investment, but hey, if it works, um, then it's worth it. Let me let me ask you a question about that. Yep. So when you're setting up a, a website, and it seems like you're now thinking about doing these micro sites, the separate landing pages for separate books. Right. How much content do you need to start to attract traffic on you know the the search engines? 
That that's a really good question. One one of the one of the tricks, and again, this is I, I can't stress enough the value of working with somebody to show you some of this stuff and investing in some of the tools to do some of the research online yourself. Um, and WordTracker.com is one of them. That's the one I recommend. You make a note, and you'll you'll pay like seventy bucks a month to do your keyword research. But again, if you're serious about this stuff, like it's the only way to go. So here, here's how you kind of decide. It partly depends on your niche. So how do you decide what your domain name should be, how much content you should put up on the site, and what that content should be? Well, you have to do the homework. So for literary agents, for example, uh, if I do a search, there are 400 keywords that include the phrase literary agents online that a lot of people look for. Does that make sense? So once I know that, I go, okay, that's, that's a valuable domain. I can invest in that. There's a lot of content I can create. So there's basically, uh, and I'll organize the content based on how, much, how many keywords there are. So if you go to my literary agent's website, you'll see there, is a, there are a lot of pages because there are a lot of terms that people look for, right? So it makes sense. And it, can, it might just be you know, one or two or three or four of those that you start ranking for pretty quickly, and you start getting clients, and you start doing well. And other ones will take longer. Um, it's probably going to take me another year before people type in the phrase literary agents without anything else into Google, and I show up on page one of Google for that. But literary co agent contract, I show up on page one. You know, uh, directory of literary agents, I show up on page one. But the, the main big keyword, that takes a while. you got to earn that. Um, and I'll give you another example. So the query letter website, there are only 90 terms that really have keywords with the word query letter in there. So I'm not going to spend as much time building out that website. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah. It, it, is Google really the be-all and end-all? Is it all about ranking on Google, or are there other you know, ways to measure your you know, inter, you know, other sites or other things that you should be doing besides just ranking high on Google? Yeah, well, I, I kind of say it's kind of like social media, right? We're all entrepreneurs. We're doing other things. We don't want to be SEO experts. So my main focus is Google because between Google Analytics and another thing you need to be using is Google Webmaster Tools, both of those things, you're going to get most of your traffic from Google. It's massive. I can't, I can't tell you if it's, it's three or four times or five times as much as I would get from Yahoo or Bing or something like that, but it's, it's that much of a difference. So I don't really care about the others. Um, you shouldn't really focus on anything. Just focus on Google for the first year. Like social media, you know, should you do Pinterest, Facebook, Twitter, you know, LinkedIn, Google Plus, like you'll go insane, right? So what we recommend is, you know, just do Facebook and Twitter and put most of your emphasis actually on Twitter because there are automated tools that let you build your numbers quickly on Twitter that you can't really do with other sites. So again, it's, it's part of this problem as infopreneurs is that there are so many shiny objects that you can kind of spend a lot of time and not, not get results because you're too diluted. Yeah. Well, this is, this is great. We like to keep this interactive, so I want to open yep. it up for yep. questions. Um, but before I do, I just want to emphasize, uh, what, again, for really everyone who's on the call and who may be watching this later, um, that I think what, one of the things that you're doing is really phenomenal. Um, because when we look at business strategies, and you know this course that we're doing, the 10XIS Info Strategy Program, is really all about trying to understand different business strategies for um, creating information products and marketing and selling them online. And one of the things we talk about are different business strategies, different business models, and there's a difference between the traditional professional service provider model um, and the sort of coaching model. And the, the difference is that professional service providers, particularly uh, like lawyers, uh, which is my background, um, we didn't call uh, clients or solicit their business or try to bring them in the door. Uh, there are actually ethical limitations, so you can't do it. Um, mm. What we did was we would you know, develop relationships, do a lot of networking, have people get to know, like, and trust us, and then come to us when they had a legal problem. And a lot of professional service providers, traditional professional service providers, 
took that approach. It's an indirect sales approach, which is based on networking. That's why people used to play a lot of golf, was to develop the key relationships where they'd be referred in. And that lasted, that, that style of doing business lasted for a long time. Um, coaching is a little different because even before the internet, it was more proactive selling. There was more direct marketing. And so one of the changes today is that it's harder for professional service providers to get business without selling, without being proactive. And uh, those of us who, you know, most people don't like to sell themselves. They don't like to say, hey, I'm the world's greatest coach. Come try my program. And if they do, it tends not to be that effective. So what you're doing is really um, terrific because by using SEO, you're allowing people to find you for the reason that they may have, you know, where they need help or they want help solving a problem. You're, you're able to sort of combine the traditional professional service provider indirect sales approach with the more internet-based, you know, proactive online selling so that you don't have to be in people's face saying, I'm great, hire me as your coach. You can say, hey, I've got this content. It's out there on the net. If you're searching for information, you're going to naturally find me. It's going to position you as an expert. And then when people come to you, they already know a lot about you. Um, and so I just want to emphasize that what you're doing is, is really a phenomenal. I don't see many business models out there where people are doing that, where they're able to take the indirect sales approach. And in fact, I've heard a lot of people say, you can't uh, do search engine optimization. Uh, it's just going to, you know, you just, Google's going to change their algorithm and, you know, you're going to be out of business. So, yeah. um, <laughs> well, not, I'll, sure I'll say it. Heard. Yeah, no, it's, it's crazy. I know everybody thinks that, but it's, it's, again, if you do it right, I mean, if you think about it on the simplest level, what Google cares about is what, people on the internet care about, which is when they search for real content, they find real content that's valuable to them. So if you just think that way and you deliver real content, what happens is people get scared about giving too much away. I have people email me and leave comments on my website. They go, what's the deal? Like, how do you make money? What's the catch? What's the scam? Why? Because they can't figure out, they'll ask me directly, how do you make money? Because they can't figure it out. And the secret is I have a lot of content that people want, not everything, but I know if you're a coach, you know the difference, and this is how you sell coaching, is that content is only level one. Uh, level two is you get in a learning environment like this that's a little interactive. You get more value out of it. One-on-one -on -one coaching, you get even more value to apply everything. But it's like, you know, content by itself, it's not that valuable. So you can give it away, and you should, because then you kind of eliminate some of your competition that doesn't offer coaching. You know. Well, and that's really what the internet has done: is has devalued content by itself, and that's why you need to uh, add the expertise to it. Let's turn it out over to questions. Right. Um, Bryce, would you like to start off? You have to take off your take yourself off mute. Bryce, are you Sorry. there? Yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. There we okay, go. Yeah. There we go. Look, um, Mark, where does um, where does YouTube fit in into this, and and how can you how can you optimize YouTube? Hmm, that's that's a really good question because it really it really comes down to, um, again, and this is my wife's influence. For all of you who don't know Ingrid, I know Bryce does. Is Ingrid is always reminding me. Just because there are a hundred ways that you can do things and get exposure, none of that's going to work. It's not going to stick if you don't find the ones that are right for you. Um, and so this is the thing. You'll see, Bryce, because you, you watch Ingrid and I. She does mostly video. Why is that? Because she's great on video. She can do it effectively and faster than I can. I do mostly articles because that's better for me. Um, so if somebody's great on, on video, YouTube is a great way. Crank out those videos, you know, put them on your website, put them also on YouTube, and always make sure at the end of your videos or throughout your videos you have the website link at the bottom so you drive the traffic to your website. Um, but it's, it's a great strategy, but again, the key, the key is it depends on what, where you want to spend most of your energy. Mark, we're, yeah. we're doing video and you look great. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> 
Uh, and, that, and that makes per that makes perfect sense too, Mark. Um, with you being the the literary agent, you writing articles, it's that's it's it's right. An it fits the brand for more, right? Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I can do video too, but people expect it's like I just paid somebody to go through and fix every typo and grammar mistake on my website because I know I'm judged differently, more yeah. severely because I'm a publishing professional. If I have a typo on my my website, that's not good for my business. You know, mm. someone else can get away with that, not me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Mark. Mm -hmm. Elizabeth. No, thank, thank you. Elizabeth, you're up. Yeah, hi. Um, I, I, I'm a coach. Hi, and um, I work with, and also an artist. I work with painting, uh, process painting. Um, I was wondering. I already have my name domain name and I love the name uh, and so but I, I kind of get from what you say that that's a, a, a very important thing that you choose a name domain name that that people look for uh, there's and, and the question is uh, if and I don't want to hire a, um, a a professional and I want to do it myself where do I start and what do I do well I, I'd at the very least rec recommend that you at least do like some kind of initial consultation with somebody um, to kind of make sure you're on the right track. But you can do some of the preliminary research through Word Tracker um, for your keywords. But uh, Vincent, I, I think you've got your microphone on, and we're getting some feedback. Uh, so let me see if I can give you an example. And everybody definitely should have their own name, first and last name, and forward that to your main site. Like you'll see, if you go to markbenalatesta.com, I have a page optimized for that, a couple pages, that's it. Um, and then if people click on the Enter button, it takes them to my other website. So you can have a few different domain names. But the, the problem with choosing a name that nobody searches for is just nobody's going to find it. Right. You know, and we, we made that mistake um, years ago with one of our companies where we coach entrepreneurs. It's called Born Celebrity. Well, nobody looks for that. You know, it's, it's clever. It means something to us. It means something to our audience, but no one's looking for that. So now we're creating other websites with the content like personal branding, um, mission statement, things that people look for that are our target market. We'll still use Born Celebrity in marketing, and, but that will forward to the other domains. Because again, it's like, you know, you can have the greatest name in the universe. If you're Google, you can afford it because you've got a billion dollar marketing budget. You get the name out and mm -hmm. people find you. But, you know, otherwise it, it'll, it can really hurt you. Right. So that'll be a start. But I can, I can link it. Yeah. But I can link it to my own, um, to, to the company, company name. Right, just, right. Mm -hmm. Okay. And also, one thing I didn't talk about here, that this is one of the biggest things I learned. There's another software you might want to check out. It's called blogvault.com or blogvault.net, I think it is. And if I, I recommend that you have a WordPress-based site, not through WordPress.com, but you, you, you get your domain name um, and use a normal web hosting company like you know, HostGator, buy your domain name at GoDaddy, and then install WordPress on that site. It's fairly easy. Um, and do it that way. And if you do that and use something like Blog Vault, it will back up your website a few times a day, but it also makes it super easy. In five minutes, I could basically take your website that's on one domain and move it to your new one. It's really simple. So you can clone sites, you can copy things. It's a huge time saver, especially once you get serious and you start having more than one site. <laughs> nice. Uh, John, would you like to ask a question? Sure, Roger. Thanks. Uh, Mark, appreciate you being on the call here. Uh, just following up on your last answer, uh, I, have a, I have a WordPress site, and it's... Uh, Hosted by WordPress, I think, uh, okay. and it's uh, but it's got its own domain name. It's not a it's not a subdomain of WordPress. So, what's tell me tell me the why I, why I shouldn't be doing that? Why I should host it on on, on another another site? Install WordPress on another host as you just what's your, what's your domain name? 
It's uh, business-succession.com. Okay. Um, well, it sounds like you have done it right. Like your the WordPress sites. I think it, it has your domain and then slash WordPress, something like that, right? Right. And there's like maybe a premium option that I was able to get rid of that and just have it go directly okay. to my. Uh, URL. So if, is that really the issue that you have with, with well, most WordPress the, sites? Well, the idea, the idea is that I don't like, I don't like you being dependent on anything, um, and this is why even when we set up some websites for our coaching clients, and you know, we basic, we make them set up their domain name and pay for it, and set up their web hosting account, and then we go configure everything for it. But the idea is you want to have complete control, and you know, if you're setting up your thing through WordPress. You know what happens then if you want to move it? Is it can you move it from there easily to another another domain or another web hosting company? I'm not sure. You know what I mean? Right. So so you start having limits, and if you buy your own domain and you do traditional web hosting, you know through something like HostGator, then you have complete control. Um, you're not locked in to some other system. You know it seems like WordPress is you know king of the world right now. You know, but who knows if they're around in in three years? Right. Thanks. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I got it. Ray, Bonnie, you're up next. Tell you what, I'm going to turn it over to Bonnie first. She's got a question, and then I'll follow up uh, with Mark separately. Okay. Hi, Mark. I was just curious, who is your SEO coach? Oh, I'm so glad because, uh, yeah, I feel like uh, I really have to promote her, A, because she's great, but B, because I'm sharing some of the stuff she helped me do. So I, to be okay with that, I, I better send you to her um, for, for support. But uh, her name is Dagmar Gattel. So if you go to D-A-G-M-A-R and then G-A-T-E-L-L.com, that's her website. And uh, you'll see that she follows some of our business model a little bit, Roger. Uh, I, I really encouraged her to do an introductory call same way. So, I mean, you guys can, she'll send you a detailed questionnaire, um, inexpensive intro call. It's just a good way to get to know somebody, low risk for you. And then if you want to do more, I'm sure she'll tell you how to do that. But um, just that one introductory call, I, I think she charges, uh, I don't know. Well, I won't say, but I know it's inexpensive, but I, I don't know exactly what it is. So I don't want to misquote it. So then you can then engage her to help you further from the introductory call if you would like, or did you yeah, end up she, doing most of the work? Um, well, it it all depends. I mean, she, her model is is mostly, and I mean, this is how we coach too. It's like you know, some people don't like this, but it's more about empowering you because you have to understand when it comes to marketing. It's like you've got to know your stuff and know what's going on, and it's. It's scary, it's, it's extra work, but at the end of the day, if you're going to pay someone later to do any of this, you've got to know how it works. Right. Or, or, you never, or it's a black hole you know, of, of spending money on, on the wrong things. And, you know, but sh sh yeah, it's, it's more about you learning it and then implementing more than somebody doing everything for you. Watch out for that stuff out there for SEO because there are people, yeah, you can throw money at them, and they'll do things on the back end that get you some results, but the second you quit paying them, guess what? Yeah, it's over. It goes away. And those kind of things are more likely to get you in trouble with Google because they're not the right things, mm -hmm. you know? So. Great. Ray, did you have questions? Yeah, you may, you may have already answered this question, Mark. I think you did, but it sounds like what you're doing is a lot of SEO based on best practices. It sounds yeah. like you're doing the SEO yourself rather than paying someone to do it? Yeah, it, and yeah, it is, but it's, it's really simple. Okay? So the complex part that you need to pay somebody for is, and this is something you could work with me or with someone else on, is that comes before the SEO is making sure that you're going to be doing the right thing on SEO, like for your business, right? Because the SEO coach might not be, you know, the business marketing coach. So you got to know that you're going after the right target market with the right things before you even get to the SEO coach. And then what the SEO coach will help you do is choose the right keywords, right? 
that's the most important part, like give you a list and say, okay, this is your target market, this is what you want to do, you should use this as your domain name, this is available, and then here's a list of 50, 100, 300 keyword phrases, and here are the 10 most popular ones, you should have pages on your site for these, and then here's 100 more that aren't as popular, but they're pretty good, and over the next year or two, go if, if you're creating a lot of content, create two, YouTube videos or blog posts using those keywords. And the thing about keywords, and, and most people don't know this, for every web page or blog post, you really, you can only have one keyword. That's it. People cram them in. They try to cram in 10 keywords in their meta tags. Google doesn't look at those. They look at your content. And what they're looking for is what's the one keyword that is repeated throughout, like 4 to 6% of your page is that keyword. And that's how you'll rank for that keyword. And that keyword has to be in your title. At the beginning, it has to be in your headers throughout the article, and it has to be in there a certain percentage, and it's that simple. Once you know that, and there are websites that you can use that are even free, uh, one of them is called GoRank.com, and you can go there, put in a URL for any one of your website pages, and you'll see what percentage your main keyword shows up. When it's between 4 and 6%, that's the sweet spot. But it's, it's really that simple. The hard part is, uh, you know, adjusting to creating content where you're not just, you know, diarrhea creating it, but it's one keyword. And y you have to train your brain. It's not just provide good content that's clear now. It's like, well, I have to do that, and I have to seed this keyword throughout and repeat it every five lines, you know. It's, it's a new skill. So that's the hard part, and then getting that list of keywords and consistently cranking that out, and then it, it pays off. But you really need help to kind of, you know, find the right keywords for you, making sure you're structuring your site the right way, because uh, that's where you can really go wrong. You know. Thanks. I, I have one other question. I think this will be a simple, quick one. You mentioned mm -hmm. early on that somehow you go in to look at your Google ranking. Is, there, is that within Webmaster Tools or Google Analytics that I just haven't figured out, or is there someplace special you go for that? Uh, that will show up. Um, I can't remember. Uh, I, I get these two mixed up. Um, here's the difference, basically, between Google Analytics and Google Webmaster. Google Analytics is basically you, you, you add your website to it, and then you install a little bit of code that they give you on your website, and then you can track how many people are coming to your site, how they find you, and all that. Um, for some reason, I don't know why, uh, there will be a huge percentage of data uh, about people and how they found you that won't show up in Google Analytics. But if you go into <coughs> Webmaster Tools, that data shows up there. And within one of those two sites, I think it's the Webmaster Tools, you will see what, where you're ranking in Google for, for each one of your terms that people are, are finding you through that. Does that make sense? Yep. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. And then there's one other website. I think it's called semrush.com. I haven't signed up with them, but I'm checking them out right now. Uh, if you go there and you type in your domain name, it will show you, uh, this is how I knew at, before this call that I have 180 keywords that I'm ranking for on uh, page one of Google because I went there and I typed in my domain. Now, it won't, it'll only show you like the first 15 what the keywords are, and then if you want to see what the rest are, you have to sign up for something. Um, but it's a good sense to go there quickly, and you can see that my website's for real, um, and you can kind of check out, check out yours. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Mark, one of the things that you, you said brings up this uh, really uh, question about you know when you start the keyword search process because you really have to know what your business is about and what your value proposition is before you yes. can pick a keyword. So yep. can you talk a little bit about what do you do with people who are just starting out who haven't really sold enough to be able to answer that question? Ooh, um, yeah, that's a tough one, and that's that's why I say I recommend like. You know, you, you take that step and figure that out, you know, with somebody, whether it's in like a group mastermind, if that's all someone can do, or 
through some one-on-one -on -one coaching, a couple calls just to kind of figure that out because, again, it's like it's exactly like writing a book, you know, that content and setting all that up. And it just it's painful to kind of get six months or a year into it and find out you did it wrong <laughs> and you're not getting traffic, you know, and you want to shift gears. And, uh, you know, and that, that's, when I, that's when I sucked it up and I got an SEO coach and I said, I'm committed to this, so let me, let me do it right, you know. Well, you knew you had some business, though. I mean, you knew uh, yep. what it was that attracted customers, um, why they were coming to you, and what they would pay for. That's true. And you, you know what? I mean, so I'll answer in 60 seconds how I got there, which was I just put up a basic website without doing SEO, kind of figuring I, I, I need to do something. I started going out to events and networking and started getting clients that way to get a handle on it you know, and, and that's it. You have to talk about it. You have to see what people's resistance is. You have to see what their questions are. You have to see what they resonate with the most. Um, like one thing I learned over the first year of my business as a coach and creating content on my website, in the beginning I was thinking, well, it's all about the content. People want to know everything about agents and, and insider secrets about publishing. Well, what I learned a year into it is that Half of the reason people follow me and they read my email newsletters every week, and it's because they've told me this, is because I make them believe that they can do it. The belief. Not in me, not in my content, in themselves. You know, so that, that was a big revelation. That shifted some of my content. And, and again, it's like, you know, if I'm posting a blog post every week, how much content can I deliver? You know, so if, if you look at my content, Roger, week by week, you'll see half of it is just about mindset stuff and making people believe, you know, because there's only so much hard content I can give them, you know. Nice. So nice. things like that you, you learn over time. There's, Inspiration. You know, is that a big part of it, what you're trying to do? Yeah, making people believe that they can do it. And when I really got this um, was a few weeks ago recording a testimonial call with somebody um, and she said, because I always ask, my last question is, you know, what, what skepticism did you have before you signed up with me? Um, because, and people are scared to ask that because they don't want to hear it, but I want to hear it because I know other people are thinking it. And she said, well, the reason I really signed up with you in the end is because you made me believe in myself that maybe I was good enough to do it. She's like, it's not your content, and it wasn't about trusting you. I trusted you in a second, the second I got your website and read about you. But it, the, the thing that took me a while to sign up with you is believing in myself. And so I realized, you know, you see a lot of my messaging, a lot of my content speaks to that. And I revised my introductory call even to speak more to that, to make people believe that it's possible. You know, one of my big phrases is like, getting published isn't luck, it's a decision. And I can't tell you how many people quote that as one of the most valuable parts they got out of my MP3. I'm like, really? You know, not like the insider stuff, but that, okay. You know. <laughs> Tim, you're up. What's your question? Okay. Hi, everybody. Hi, Mark. Thanks for uh, your information today. It's, it's helpful. How oh, you bet. Um, my first question is, what is your backlink strategy? <laughs> um... Well, that, that's kind of been third on my list, uh, so I, I haven't really done much with it. Um, you'll see me, if you follow me, you'll see a lot of what I do in the new year with that, and there, there's one software I'll be using for this. Um, uh, it's called Contest Burner, if it's still applicable. I bought it like a year ago and haven't even used it yet. I'm sure you can relate to some of that, um, but basically it... It, it, you can set up the rules however you want, but you set up little contests, and people get points for how much they promote you. It might be through social media. It might be through backlinks. Like, you can set it up however you want, and then based on those points, people have a greater chance of winning certain prizes and things. So that's one of the things I'll be doing. I'll also email my list once in a while and say, hey, you know, um, you know add me to your blog role or, hey, I have an article or a special interview if you want to share it with your list. So I've done that with a few people. But it's really time intensive. And I, the way I looked at it is you got to figure out your core content first. And then, you know, I'll blitz social media. And then the backlinking, will, it, it will kind of happen naturally. 
if you're doing those things, and then um, you know, I'll start ramping up the campaigns for it. But okay, um, the social other... media is is backlinks is links in a way too. Right. You know. Do you uh, use Google AdWords on any of your campaigns? Oh no, and I'll tell you a good good question. Um, and again, this is why I recommend you work with somebody when you do this strategy. For my industry in book publishing, there are tons of writer scams. It's a big thing in publishing. It's it's writers are super paranoid, right? And rightfully so, because there are a lot of scams. You will never ever see me do any paid advertising online because the second I do that no one will trust me I have to do organic SEO have to now you might see me do an ad in like writers digest or something like that that promotes my free online agent directory something like that that's even kind of a soft sell that way but never I don't I don't think I'll promote any kind of paid service you know through Google AdWords or through any of that because it just People turn their nose up. They don't trust me. Yep. They don't trust anyone. You know, it's not me. It's just the industry. Right. Great. Thank you. But for, for, for other people, it would be brilliant. Vincent, do you have a question? Uh, hi. No, I don't have any question. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm kind of surprised, Vincent. You're you're quite a a great SEO, um, you know, person yourself. Yeah, but thank you. Um, it's just a, it was very good to hear. It was a refresher on on what I've learned already a few years ago. So it was very agreeable and very interesting to hear it from a different perspective. But uh, I'm sorry, I don't have a question. <laughs> did 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 you? Uh, did you have any insights that you wanted to offer? I mean, did what Mark say make sense to you? And yeah, absolutely, you absolutely. Well, the, the few thing I would like to say is, um, I agreed with everything that was said. Absolutely. Um, uh, what I would like to add, I, I had I had technical problems, so I've I've broken up many times during the conference, unfortunately. So I don't know exactly what has been said, but uh, I said I don't know if what if what I'm going to say has already been said. But basically, I I totally agree with the, the real estate uh, approach that if you rank on a certain keyword, that's your piece of property on Google, and so if you rank on a literary agent and you're highly optimized for that, it's going to be very hard for somebody to outrank you. But the, the perspective that you have is that it's, it's, a, it's a competitive game. And so the, thing that, the grain of thought I would like to add is that when you choose your keywords, the relevant keyword for the kind of market you want to target, is um, there, are, there are some keywords that may be highly competitive already. And you may not want to start with those ones. You may want to start with more niche keywords. Like, let's say literary agent for romance book, assuming you know there is a market for that. Literary agent for... Um, for um, dummies book, whatever, and those key those keywords may may bring less traffic, but may, it might be easier for you to rank on those, uh, as opposed to like you said, um, literary agents. Maybe in the next year you'll be able to rank on the first page just on those two keywords. So right. it's a it's very much a competitive game, and you have to spend your time wisely on where where do you want to compete and where do you want to maintain. You know that real estate property. You know, do you have the energy to maintain that real estate, that real estate property on, 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 on those keywords? Now it's it's a really good point. I had that on my list and didn't have time to get to it. I can kind of speak a little a little more to that. Is that um, one of the things that uh, Dagmar helped me with in the beginning was I was looking at I bought a bunch of domains. So I got QueryLetter.com, LiteraryAgents.com. Um, you know, quite a few different ones, um, but part of the process, and you can see this in Word Tracker also, is not only how many people are looking for these key phrases, but how much competition do you have? Um, and that's a big part of it. And see, this is the irony, right? Is that I might I might get just as many clients through my query letter website as the literary agent's website, even though there's one fifth of the people searching for it, because maybe there's a lot less competition there. That makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. And another thing, along with that, that I forgot to mention was um, the difference between website pages and blog posts. Um, and this is something, you know, again, that 
isn't intuitive, but there, there's greater benefit to having both web pages and blog posts within your website. Um, so if you have both of those things, you're going to have a better chance of ranking well. Um, some people just do one or the other. When you and, say and web, when you say web pages, does that mean a, a page on a WordPress blog, or does it need to be something outside of WordPress? Well, no. See, all my sites are completely WordPress, but you can, even though it's a WordPress blog, technically, right, is you can have web pages and you can have blog posts. So mm -hmm. if you go to my website at literary-agents.com, you'll see a whole bunch of two rows of nav bar. And on all of those things, if you click and you see the drop-down menus, those are all web pages. But if you click on my blog button, you'll see you'll enter my blog and you'll see blog posts. And the difference is that the web pages are your main content. That's your core meat and potatoes, most valuable content. Um, the blog posts are kind of the more flavor of the week thing. You're cranking those out over time. Maybe it's more timely stuff. And it's the more interactive part. And it's the thing that people are more likely to comment on and share. Does that make sense? And so I don't even have my web pages configured where people can leave comments. Um, and Annette, this is one of my little tricks, is I have my website designed. There are probably about 80, 90 pages of content on the main area of my website. But they're divided up into little training guides in the nav bar. And you'll go, if you go into any one of them and you go, oh, OK, um, do I want to find an agent? Oh, that's where I'm at. I don't need to. to uh, do XYZ, I need to find an agent. You go in, you click on the first article, and you'll see at the end, I don't have where you can leave comments. I don't want that. I want you to click on my big yellow next button that takes you to my next page. And at the end of that is another next button. So it's like a little 10 part guide that really keeps you, giving you the content you need in a nice logical flow so you stay in there, you keep getting educated, and you see the value. Does that make sense? Yes. Well, we have a few minutes left. Uh, does anyone want to jump in with additional questions? I'm I think you answered all the questions. Can't believe it. I <laughs> I got I got half a dozen more questions myself. Let me ask you quickly. Um, yeah. 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 Absolutely. You know, what's a realistic expectation? For the ramp up time, if I create this really optimized, great, the right balance of keywords, four to six percent, and I've got it in my title and my headings, and uh, you know, when should I get results? Is it you know as soon as I post it? Oh boy, it it all depends, you know, and this is where the variables come in. It it kind of depends on again partly on your competition, you know, to speak to that. Um, and, and really, the smart thing to do is kind of build, build your structure and your foundation with those main keywords that the most people look for that are going to take you a while to rank for. At least get some of those up, right? But then you also want to, as part of your strategy, use some of those terms that not as many people look for and there's not as much competition because that's going to be what gets you the results first. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Because, like you know, I'm just not. You're just not going to rank for some things right away. Um, and I, and I'll, I'll give you an example, like uh, you know, how to find a literary agent. You know, I'm not going to rank for that in the first few months or even six months, probably. But Nicholas Sparks, literary agent, Oprah Winfrey's literary agent. Guess what? You know, some people are looking that up, and there aren't pages optimized for that really. Like I, I rank, if you type in Nicholas Sparks Literary Agent, I think I rank, I'm the second result that comes up. Same thing for Oprah. You know, so nice. it's, it's, a mix, it's a mix of that strategy. And again, the only way to know that is to look at the keyword research. Not only what, how much are people looking for these terms, but again, your competition. So. I, I imagine that when it comes to SEO, you get out a lot of what you put in. That if you really want the results, you have to spend the time. How much time <laughs> should someone spend, or if they hire someone to do it, how much time does it take? I mean, you said you had 180 keywords optimized. You know, just the thought of identifying 180 keywords and then testing whether they're 
you know, optimized or what their ranking is, that takes a lot of time. Um, but you're building a business around it. So what, what's, yeah, a, what's I mean, a realistic amount of time to spend? It's, it's kind of like, I don't know, I mean, I, I look at it as, you know, we're entering the new year, right? So it's like, what's your big strategy going to be? You know, and for me, you know, you pick a couple things that you're really going to commit to that are going to work well. You know, and for me, this coming year, it's going to be more SEO and social media, my big projects, right? And so if, if you know, and this, this gets to the belief thing, right? If you know it's going to work, you're a lot more motivated. You're willing to say, okay, I'm going to schedule, like, let's say an intro call with Dagmar. I'm going to spend the next 30 days figuring out what my strategy should be and get my structure figured out and my keywords, and then maybe I'm going to take the next three months after that, spending a significant chunk of my time creating the content and getting the website up. And, you know, it's a sacrifice, but if you know in the end that it works, you know, then it, it's easier to make the commitment, you know, and make the investment of time. And, I mean, for me, I literally took, um, I took like a couple months to create that, that 60 or 70, 80 pages on my main website, and it was brutal. It was absolutely brutal. But one, one more little secret, um, those web pages don't need to be more than 400 to 700 words each. And this is another thing that, that you know, gets people uninspired is that, you know, they'll write a 3,000-word article. Well, that's not helping you. Divide it up into five parts. You know, you don't need more than 400, 500 pages per page or per post. Um, so if you wanted a strategy, you could say, I'm going to write one 400 to 700 word uh, article a day. For the next 30 days. For the next 30 days. That's a great, great start. And then just make sure that you're using the right keywords and things are organized the right way. And I'll tell you, one, one thing I learned the hard way is that... Um, you're better off getting a basic website up. You know, like the way I did it wasn't right. My SEO coach told me this, but I, I had to wrap my brain around it. I couldn't do it. So I did it kind of the wrong way, which was I took all that time to create everything before I launched it and before I gave Google permission to see the website and search it and put it in search engines because my brain, the way I work, I'm an organizer. So I'm like, well, I have this whole straight site structure figured out these are all the things people look for. It's a lot. And I wanted to have it all done and all up and all linking to each other before I launched it because, you know, that was the only thing that made sense to me. Um, but a better strategy is to figure out, like, a beta version, which is maybe 10 to 20 pages, where that all works, it's self-contained, it makes sense, get that online, and then start consistently adding more content. Um, and actually, that works better with Google as well, you know, because it, it takes time for Google to index your site and get that all into the search engines. So, One of the things I think you're very modest about is how deep you probably go to really understand this stuff. And not so much from a technical standpoint, but from a, you know, caring about, you know, the reaction, the engagement, the looking at the numbers or the keywords or the, you know, the analytics to really understand what's going on, what it all means, right? I mean, how much of your time is really spent on interpreting the results that you're getting or figuring None. out? Nothing. No, no, because no, it really, <laughs> not really, honestly, very little. Okay, so I have this little app on my phone um, that I, 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 I'm OCD with this. Even a year after launching my website, I check it once a day, and I, I've entered in like my hundred top keywords. And it will show me where, how I'm ranking on Google every day. Like, so I look at that every day, but that's all I do. And the, it really doesn't matter. Do your research, get the right keywords, and then keep putting the content out there. You're going to get customers. You're going to get clients. Now, the only way the analytics really matters is, like, right now, I, I have two parts of my website, right, the Literary Agents website. One part is the main content, teaching. And then there's this other part that is a directory of all the literary agents in the U.S. There are about a 1,000 of them. So I created this directory. Again, didn't want to do it, but I get most people coming to my website because they're looking for that. So I created that. Well, um, I want to break that apart. 
And I want my literary agent site is doing good, but now I'm looking at my search results. I'm seeing where I'm getting all my traffic. I'm getting a lot of people looking for directory of literary agents, best literary agents. That's one of my biggest converting phrases, top literary agents. So I bought up a bunch of those domains a while back, and I'm probably going to pull out my directory and host it on its own website because a lot of people go to my website, they don't even know it's there. Like I have so much content. You know, that it's buried. So I'm gonna I'm gonna separate that out, but that's that's about it. I mean, there's not much you can do with the analyzing everything. You know, you either you have the best keywords and keep getting content out, or or not. You know, but w with your messaging, it's important. Or if you see, you know, like like I said, a lot of people are looking for best literary agents, that kind of thing. Maybe maybe I devote even a separate squeeze page for that and record an MP3 and just talk maybe about, you know, the 50 best literary agents or how to figure out who the best ones are, pop up a, a quick squeeze page, just a couple pages for that and see what happens. That That's smart, but, you know, your first two year or two of doing SEO, I mean, it's just about all you can do to just get, research your stuff and get the content up, you know. That's why I haven't even touched social media. It's like, you know, you can only eat one elephant at a time, you know. <laughs> well, I, I think you're amazing at what you do, and you're obviously getting the results, and I appreciate your, your sharing it with us today. Do you have anything that you would like to add, or? Uh, I, think, uh, I think we covered everything, and I, I just hope I didn't overwhelm everybody. It's, uh, again, all I, all I can say, I mean, my... We're all info marketers, right? And the, the long-term thing we all dream of, it's not like winning the lottery. It's kind of having, and even if we offer coaching, we love coaching, but in the back of our mind, what's the ideal? We want to have this online business that's optimized so that if we don't want to coach anymore, we don't have to. We have info products. You know, we have, we have things set up that, you know, we can write the books, whatever it is we want. We don't have to do that, and and I don't know any better way than SEO to kind of create that. So it's worth the investment nice. of time, you know. And and how can people reach you if they'd like to know more? Oh, um, boy, that's a good question. Uh, I would say uh, you can go to literary agents with the dash in the middle, literary-agents.com, to see the the stuff I do there, you can contact me through there. But also go to personalbrandingexpert.com. That's uh, the company I run with Ingrid. You'll see she's on the she's the face of that business, so she's there. But uh, you can see some of what we do there as as well. Um, but I, I really I'd be happy to. And and again, you know, I I make most of my money. We make most of our money off big coaching programs. And but. What I'd be happy to do is if anybody is thinking about maybe going and working with Dagmar or someone else for SEO, before you do that, at least maybe do like a one-hour call with me to talk about your business and make sure that you're ready and right before you go do that. Does that make sense? Um, so I'd be happy to do that even though I know that it, usually those calls are a means to an end to get you know people from that call into a bigger program with me. Um, you know, for, for you guys, you don't need that. If SEO is your goal, you need someone like Dagmar, um, but you'd really benefit from at least one call to kind of make sure you're ready for her and you make the most of that, you know. Well, this has been great. Uh, you certainly have inspired me to fine-tune my content and keywords or maybe even to post some content. <laughs> 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 so thank you very much for uh, sharing your time and your wisdom. It's been great. And uh, as always, uh, I love the work that you're doing and look forward to uh, seeing more of it. Yeah, appreciate it. Thank you for having me. And uh, thank you, everybody, for really, really thoughtful questions. Um, appreciate that. Makes it a lot more fun when people are present. So Thanks, Mark. Good. Thanks, Mark. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Thank you. So we're going to take a quick break here, and then we're going to go to part two.